Welcome and thank you for tuning in to the Visit the Northeast of Scotland podcast with me, your host, Jacqueline Van Lennacher. In today's episode, I'm speaking with Martin Benny, an Aberdeenshire-based photographer who has a passion for landscape photography. Aberdeenshire has been Martin's inspiration for the last few years after spending time abroad with his work. Martin talks about why landscape photography speaks to him, how he has taken to helping others develop their style through offering tuition sessions while exploring Royal D site, and he gives us some insight into what makes a great photo. Good morning, Martin, and thank you very much for joining me today. Can you give us some background about how you became a photographer, how you picked up the camera, and how you became passionate about photography? I can't remember much before sort of 16, you know, when I was 16, I got a, a Pentax any super for my birthday, which is a, is a film camera. And it was quite a, quite a good one back in the day, you know, and my, my father always had a camera. So throughout our life, we've got pictures since we were born. My dad was in the RAF, so we moved around a lot. And I started taking pictures. I still have the pictures I first took of the camera, you know, it's basically me looking in a mirror, taking a picture of myself, taking a picture. So I have all the negatives from the 80s and 90s. And uh, with my friends growing up, I always had my camera around. So I've got some stunning images of us all growing up. And so and I've still got the same friends now, you know. The photographs I got of them in the 80s, that you know, is, is incredible documentary of our life growing up together. We were, we, were, we were bikers, you know, and we used to hang around the beach and go on holidays to Abbey Moor and places like that, Finholm. And I had that for... I did that probably until the mid nineties. So from the, the sort of early nineties, uh, there's a big blank space. I didn't really do much photography until about maybe, I think maybe the early two thousands when digital cameras came out. I was working in Singapore and I bought a Canon 10D, which was one of the first decent Canon digital cameras. And I, took photos every now. I travelled around the world quite a lot with my job, you know, going from place to place, shipyard to shipyard. It wasn't until I arrived in Korea in 2007, and Korea back then was, it was a a small island called Goji Island. There was two shipyards, two of the biggest shipyards in the world are on this little island, and it's the most beautiful island you can ever imagine, you know, it's and back then it was farmers used to plough by hand and plant the, the, the rice by hand and you know, it was a two and a half hour drive from the Busan where we used to fly into. So it was a long journey to get there. And it kept the island quite quiet. So, you, you know, you it's like going back in time to, to a, an era where you know, there wasn't much technology there. There's, there's something about Korea. It's got big skies, you know, it's very, and it's very, very peaceful country. You know, it's, it's incredible. The energy in the country is really, really peaceful. And I, I found myself... Or during the weekend, I would just go and explore. So I'd stick some music on my car and I would just drive whichever road that took my fancy, left, right, straight on. And I found some incredible places. And anyway, so my photography improved there because the landscape suits me. It's big skies, it's wide open, it's old, you know. I, I like old stuff, you know. I like it just it just appealed to me. And then in 2012, I took a job further down in the in the very bottom of South Korea where there was no expats you know and it was incredible there the, the countryside is just stunning it's very diverse with mountains and seascapes and massive flat areas and it's really really diverse and they've got some stunning cities there and they're all modern cities you know but if you go out in the countryside it's it's uh, it is like stepping back in time if it wasn't for the the telegraph lines or the the electricity lines coming into villages you wouldn't know you went 100 years ago I took a job as a commissioning manager, which it was a billion dollar contract, you know, we had to finish it on time. It was really, really stressful. And I found myself, you know, to escape the stress, I would go out in my car and put music on and I would drive somewhere and I would just walk and visit these temples and mountains. And, and without realising it, you know, I was switching everything off mm-hmm. uh, and just being in that, in that moment, as they say, there was no, there was no thoughts, there was no stress, there was no hassle. I, I was just concentrating on seeing, uh, I don't know, light or, or, or contrast or... But we spent 18 months there. And in that 18 months, I just I just managed to switch off all the time, you know, and it's that, that feeling 
of switching off. It comes from your stomach, you know. It's it's that peace and quiet in your stomach. It's uh, you know, that it separates all the worry and the anxiety and the debt and the rubbish that's in your mind, you know. So yeah, I I, I did. I love my time there. It was my because of the stress I was under, I, I managed to find a way to escape. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, much as I tried really hard to improve my photography, I never did until I let go of the thinking of the photography and just the actual feeling. But unless I feel sort of something with what I see, I don't, I don't take a photograph, even though it looks quite nice. So I walk a lot, obviously, to, to get to different locations. I like to do something a little bit different. Mm-hmm. How do you change your perspective of well-known things like Balmoral Castle, for example, to create something new? Basically, I would I would watch the weather, and I would you know, especially you know, the last sort of couple of weeks where it's it's good dark stormy skies. We've got the colour of the trees. For a good photography day, you need clouds, and you need blue sky, and you need sun because you get the contrast, and the the lights, and the darks, and the shadows, and the the highlights. It's it's really all you need to take a good photograph. And I will just walk around until I see something that gives me that instant feeling of calm or or beauty or what are some of the places that you like to go in the northeast of Scotland? For me, it's it's going to be Balmoral Estate, Loch Mick, Loch Nagar and Balmoral Estate. I mean, it's such a fabulous area. There's so much uh, things to see there, but it's the energy of the place is really, really calm and really nice. You know, obviously the royal family, have, you know, they built there for a reason. You know, it's Loch Mick was my go to place almost every week. Because walking around there, you can take four or five photographs. But, you know, the weather changes, so that, that image is going to change depending on the weather. Yeah, you can see it almost coming across the hills, can't you? Yeah, well, it, it comes from towards where... It, normally it comes through that valley just where the glass out shield house is at the very far end of the lock, and it comes out onto the lock there, you know. And it is... To see it is just incredible, you know, even though you can't really take a photo, because it's not always possible to capture what you see. I've been up every hill and every sort of road around Loch Mick trying to find new locations and new uh, vantage points. And there was... There was one point last year... It's, and I, I'm on my own, but, but anyway, I always go on my own. Occasionally, I go out with another two local photographers, uh, Dan and Brian. But in general... I go myself because that's what I like. I like to see something nobody else sees. I like to try and capture it. So I've got a different photograph than the, the masses have. And I was, I went up, I went into Loch Mech and I went up the road on the left-hand side. I can't remember where it goes. It goes away up the hill. And I got to the top of the road. And I thought, I want to go over the mountain to, to, to get a view down onto Glass Out Shield from the mountain opposite. And it was really quite snowy and I'm, crossing the moor you know there's lots of holes and I fell in a hole and I just just before that I'd been thinking about this movie where the guy gets trapped in a, a crevice and has to cut his arm off with a pen oh, knife yeah. <laughs> and I thought it's a little bit dangerous for me to be out here on my own in this kind of conditions I, I mean I'm suitably tired and I've got food and I, I'm okay if something happens but there's no phone signal there anyway I, I, <laughs> I my foot went down this hole you know and I couldn't get it out to begin with, you know, it kind of gone down through a gap and caught on a rock. And I, I managed to get out a couple of seconds, a couple of seconds later. But in that, in that seconds, I fell in the hole. It's like, sh- I shouldn't really be doing this. You know, I shouldn't be in this location without anybody knowing where I am. Mm-hmm. I did find a, a new location in Balmoral last year where you could see not so much a castle, but you could see the, the foreground of Balmoral. You can see the the house, and then you can see Loch Nagar. And if you if you look at my Instagram just now, one of my latest posts is of this image, you know. And it took me a long time to find that location to get it, you know, walking the hills. Yeah, and a lot of times you go somewhere, and there's just nothing there, uh, and it's it's not a wasted walk. But because so. one of the the questions I had for you as well, I mean, so much of it is like you say, putting in the effort, putting in the miles timing it getting there in the right place the right time the right conditions so how much of getting those perfect images is a combination of hard graft luck timing and how many times do you come away with nothing at all i would say every time (laughs) (laughs) it is you can you know it's i I like to watch the weather i like to see and I, i know the locations you know, I might go there on a horrible day and I don't get a picture, but I can see the composition in that. So I'll maybe wait for the right type of weather and go back and see what it's like. You know, you've got to watch the sun and you've got to watch 
where it's coming up from, where it's going down, where the shadows will be. So it's always nice to go somewhere and it's a good location. It's got the right composition. The sun's coming up to the left, maybe, or the right, or, you know, I can, I can go to different places so many times and never get an image and still not got one that, I'm, that I want, that I've sort of pictured in my mind under the right weather conditions. I mean, photography is a lot of luck, you know, it's, there is a, there is a picture of glass out shield I took. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, the one in autumn, it's just got the house and it's got a little bit of the mountain behind it. You can see a little bit of snow coming down and it's, I just bought a new camera and I was out walking with my sons around Loch Mick and I was just taking pictures of everything. And I, I happened to look across the lock and I took, there was some firemen there because there was a little fire in the bothy behind. And I just happened to take a photograph of it, you know, and I didn't think nothing of it. And I got home and I edited it and I put it online and it, it went mental on the internet. It was all over Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and it still is. And for me, it's not a, it's not a great, it's a, it's a good image, but it has no connection with me because it was just a little walk around, you know. Sometimes when I've got to explore and find somewhere and go back 10 or 12 times, or there is always a connection with every photograph. But in that one photograph, I have no connection with it at all. It was just a snap I took as I passed, but it's been my most popular photo. So sometimes, you know, you do you, you spend a lot of effort taking a photograph, and for me, it's technically perfect, but people don't like it, and then you take a snapshot and people love it. Yeah. You know, it's really difficult to to get what you like and what people like because they're was... different things aren't they yeah and, and like you say you, you put a lot of effort emotion and feeling into it and it resonates with you and when it doesn't resonate with somebody else I can imagine it must be a little disappointing because you value it and it will always be beautiful to you but it might not be commercial yeah yes it's uh, I mean for me it, I do follow the rules of photography to set with composition with rules of third and leading lines you know and I know when I put them all together that's what makes me feel that feeling of calm and, and then I can take a photograph that's not got any of that rules in and it becomes really popular mm -hmm. I haven't really done much tuition since COVID but you know the, the people I take out they can take the same photographs as me within 15 minutes you know it's not difficult I just got to show them where to stand and what to look for and how to compose a photograph Mm -hmm. There is scientific fact on what makes a nice photograph. That's what the rules are for, you know, to uh, to give you that nice composition, rules of thumbs and leading lines, you know. Yeah. To use them in a photograph to uh, make it appeal to people. Yeah. Well, photography is something that I think appeals to a lot of people because it always brings back memories. So you, you spoke about your friends going back to the 80s and 90s. And if you look at those photos now, it would instantly take you back to that particular day and that particular moment. And you would be able to recall lots of things by seeing that image. Yes. And with social media, the way it is now, we all want to take those great photos and we all want to be able to post and share and have other people feel that as well. So you, you touched on your tuition. You do both online tuition and in-person workshops. When I do the tuition, you know, it especially this time of year, you don't have that much light during the day. So I started doing, the online tuition is, the, is for Photoshop, is the basic introduction to Photoshop and how to use it. So that's, uh, we do that online for maybe two or three hours. So it's, uh, so I, I try to give that sort of basic uh, Photoshop in that tuition. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> a few people have been telling me recently, the uh, people I've taken out for tuition, you know, because I, I probably am a bit of a nag, you know, so look here, stand there, do this, do that, you know. But now they're telling me when they're going out themselves after the tuition, all they can hear is my voice in the background going, stand here, look at me, turn there, turn that way. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a nagging tuition, I suppose. But, you know, I know what to look for. I know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, kind of concentrating on the, the technical aspects of the camera is not really something I do because people can do that online and they can do it through the manual. Then I, I, I get them to put their camera in manual. It's set to take a raw file. I get them to set their aperture to one setting, which is normally F7 or F8, which is good for landscapes. And then they concentrate only on the speed, the shutter speed, information about how your camera works and just concentrates on getting a good composition. But I, I just really, I take them to places I know are good on the right day. And, they, they, you know, the people that I've taken out, if I see their photographs on Instagram, it's really difficult to tell it's not my photograph. That's, that's okay in the day, they're going to get some good photographs, but if they have to continue that thought process 
when mm -hmm. we're to start, not just snap a you know a scene of a mountain with nothing in front of it. You need a tree in front of it, or a fence, or a, a sheep, or a horse, or something to get the composition a little bit more interesting. I did a guy a couple of weeks ago. He was up from England, and we did about eight hours. And I took him to the horses, and I took him up to the top of uh, Glen Shee. We took the chairlift up. We walked around there, and and he had a, he had a great day, you know. His photography has improved a little bit. He, he can hear the nagging voice at the back when he goes out, which is, I don't know if that's a really, it's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> I think it's a good thing because it, it just reminds you to take the time and think about what it is you're doing. Because so often I find myself, um, when I'm out and about, you know, I, I try and take photos of things that I see and do, but I don't actually take the time to compose it and look at the scene properly and try and get the best angles. I. I'm more a case of point and click and move on to the next thing, which I should probably slow down. So the fact that somebody has your voice in their head speaking to them means that they will slow down and hopefully will take a better photograph. Well, it is, you know, if you, you know, you could be standing in front of a, I don't know whether it's a building or a mountain and you've got to look around for, you know, you might have to move 10 steps to the right and you've got a fence there that sort of leads into the mountain and, you know, that's, you've got to start thinking about that composition because when you when you stand outside and you look at the scene, it, it's just stunning. Even for me, sometimes it's hard not to take a photograph because there is nothing in the foreground. But a lot of people think, oh, that's stunning, you know. But then you see it on a little screen the size of a phone. It's uh, it's not the same. I edit on a, I edit on a, I have an iMac 27 inch. And I edit all my photographs on there and I've got a 61 megapixel camera so I can see stones and flowers and everything in the scene. And then I put it on Instagram and it's like, oh shit, you cannot see it anymore. So you have to think, even when you're outside, it might look stunning when you're standing there, but if you want to show it as a photograph, you need to be a little bit more considerate of the composition. What is it you like best about landscape photography and what really appeals to you about doing that? Well, here, here, anywhere in Scotland, you can go into the mountains and not see anybody the whole day, you know, and I, I do like that peace and quiet, and it does connect with me, you know, that I can escape anything that's going in my life by going and walking the hills and looking for photographs, you know, and that's really, that's what I walk for, is to find photographs, I don't walk for the, the health, I walk for the photographs. Now, I, I got a dog a couple of weeks ago uh, from a rescue dog from the SSPCA in Edinburgh, and so it's a little bit more fun now with the dog as well, you know. Uh, it's a little bit more company. And Aberdeen is, Aberdeenshire is, you can escape anywhere. You can go to any castle, Donata Castle in the morning, there's nobody there. Mm -hmm. I can go the next day and there's lots of people there. So, the, you know, Scotland's got that ability. I can go across the bridge here in the Boyne and into Glen Tanner Estate and not see a single person. And that's, you know, that's, I like that, I like that solitude. Mm -hmm. uh, off Scotland and Aberdeenshire. I go to the horses a lot out in Bramar because they are just spectacular. You know, this, they yeah, are so- I've seen a big collection of images on, on your, is it yeah. both your yeah. website, but also on your gallery with um, Smug Mug. Went yes. and had a look yeah. there as well. And there's loads on yeah. there. But they, you know, to stand at the top of a hill with the horses, just really incredible. It is really calming because they know me quite well now. So they're quite relaxed when I'm around, you know, and I can get some really nice shots of them. but. To stand on top of that hill and just look down the valley towards the Brahma and the horses are there. And I take a lot of people there because not because of the, the well, the photography, having a horse in a landscape like that is quite special. Yeah. But the fact is, you know, they can pet the horse, they can cuddle the horse, and that sort of uh, enjoyment of being around wild animals is, is really quite special because you don't get that in many places in Scotland. No, that's true. You can find fields full of Highland cows, but the Highland cows won't come near you. They are quite timid. So, but the horses you can actually touch and pet and cuddle if you want. I, I do like to take people there for that experience, you know, not just to photograph them, but to also feel the, the horse's energy. Yeah, it's uh, more immersive. Yeah, it's a it, it is, yeah. yeah. So Good. what are some of the key points that people will learn if they go out on a, on a photography tour with you? Basically, they'll learn to see compositions, how to, how to construct a, a composition by moving your feet, basically, to get a better composition of that area that you want to photograph by including a building, a fence, an animal, a person. You know, if you've got a, a big landscape with a path through it and there's nobody on the path, it doesn't look as good as somebody on the path, maybe with a yellow jacket or a couple holding hands or, you know, it just adds a little bit of 
something special to, you know, you can get a little bit of scale of the, the landscape you're in. And going back to that picture of Glass Out Seal, I think it's probably because it's got a couple of firemen standing in front of it that gives you scale of the firemen, the house, and then the big mountain behind it. But I don't often photograph people in, in landscapes too often. If I, if I see them walking, but that's not really my point. It's, I, I like landscapes with nothing in it. You know, I like that solitude of landscape. So if they come with me, it's basically I'm going to show them how to see things and you know, how to feel a photograph rather than to, to see it. Because it is about the feeling of, wow, that's really nice. You know, I can move six steps to the left and it's not so nice because of the shadows or the composition. So uh, basically that's... That's what I try to teach them. And, you know, so it's all about location and taking somebody to a good location in the right weather and saying, OK, stand there, take that photograph. It's going to be a banger, you know. 90% of photography is effort. The other 10% is luck and chance and the person is in the path or the horse is in the location. Or So it's kind of, it's just kickstarting the, you know, they've got a love of photography. They just want to know how to improve it. I do a lot of long exposures rivers and that moment where you're waiting for that photograph to appear on your screen and you're not thinking you're just looking at what you're seeing it's it's, it's the special time you know in, in photography the walking there is quite nice so sometimes they're standing there waiting for the cloud to open up and the light to come through and is you know is that anticipation is really really quite uh, thrilling sometimes for me sometimes weather has a, a different yeah. idea than what you have you know what you're yes. I remember was it last Maybe even two years ago, I was up at uh, Bowfiddle Rock in Portnocky to take a, a, an image or try and take an image there. And it was the sea mist had come in, so the horror was sitting all around the rock. But I could see right above me patches of blue. The sun was trying to get through. And I sat there for probably 45 minutes watching it clear up, but it never cleared up nice enough to take yeah. away all the horror. So I spent a long time sitting and waiting, but I, I ended up with some really nice images with with Bowfiddle Rock in a little bit of mist, but I had to go back a couple of weeks later and try again. They're saying that I was at, well, it's about two years ago when I first bought my Sony, you know, I, I was down in Aberdeen and I was at the harbour where the lighthouse is and it was a really, really stormy day, you know, and you could see that, you know, the storm's then full on, you know, it's really dark clouds, it's raining, it's, I can't even use my camera, you know, but away in the distance, I could see some blue, I could see the storm clearing. So I just, I just waited, you know, and then this double rainbow just appeared right over the, the lighthouse, you know, and I, I knew by looking around what was going to happen, you know. You can't tell when you look enough that, the, you know, the, the, the wind's blowing this way, the clouds are moving this way, there's a bit of blue sky. Sooner or later, that blue sky is going to come over, you're going to have half storm and half blue. That's the crunch point for photography, is that light between storm and, storm and light, you know, dark and yeah. light. Yeah. And, you know, if the sun's at a certain angle, you're going to get a rainbow, regardless of uh, where you're standing, you know. So sometimes you have to understand where the sun is to understand where the rainbow is going to be. Getting people to like a certain photograph that you like is not possible, you know. I, I sell prints at this Primar market and people like it because of the colour, because it matches the bedroom. Which <laughs> <You know, laughs> is not like, why you take the photo. <laughs> no, it's not, but, you know, it, it sells. But the uh, it's, it's really difficult to... Uh, and I've got thousands of images. When I go to the Brabant market, which I do once a month, it's knowing what's going to sell. You don't know what's going to sell. Horses sell quite well. Uh, horses and cows quite do quite well. So yeah. I've got two calendars I just made up yesterday that I'm going to take to. There's a big Christmas market next uh, next month at Brabant. So I thought I'll do something different. I'll do notebooks and I'll do calendars. Oh, so those got, are good. Are you going I've to make cal- those available on your website as well? Yeah, I own, a, I own a 25 of each just to see, but I'll, I'll put them on my website and see if they sell, you know, it's, I try to pick known landmarks, you know, like a Boeing Bridge, a Boeing Castle, Balmoral, the Pyramid, it's trying to, trying to mix your images up a lot so you've got more chance of selling something, and selling yeah. photographs now is really difficult because everybody's a photographer and everybody can take the same photo maybe. Well, because they like to think that they can. Uh, you know, yeah. so, many, so many times you want to emulate what someone else has done, but it'll never be exactly the same because we see things differently and experience things differently. So. Well, if you came out with me, you could. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once I show you how to what to feel or what to look for or, or how to compose, then you can. You know, it's a lot of my IG followers are not really photographers; they're just normal people who love my photographs, and the interaction is quite nice. Probably in the last two years. All of my friends have come from IG. People I've actually gone and met in 
established a good uh, relationship with you, though. Definitely, yeah. Well, I, I did notice as well, you do spend quite a bit of time composing the text that go with your images as well. You know, you, you don't just say, this is a photo of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, brain more ponies or location wise, you're, you're, there's a, a context, there's a meaning, there's some sort of message that comes with your photos as well. Well, sometimes, you know, the, the photograph doesn't match the text. The text might be about something else, you know, it's or, or, or a, some kind of story about something. And it, it's probably what I'm trying to think about, what I'm trying to establish in myself, you know, because I think reading quotes and reading nice things and reading a little bit of history about something, a little bit different history, you know, like I do stuff for Landscape of Britain, you know, I, I post every Monday for them. And I, I shared a couple of dance shots yesterday on... On Glamis Castle, you know, and they, when I looked into the history of Glamis Castle, it's just incredible, you know, the, it goes back to 1050. Mm -hmm. and they, you know, I put a little bit about ghosts and spooky stuff, and a lot of times it's to do with what I'm thinking about that day or I'm trying to improve in myself, whether it's a quote or a, you know, a nice story about something. So there is one story, and I can't really fit it in the IG because it's too long. It's called The Egg. It's called by Andy Weir. You go and read about it, about people how we treat each other when really we are all the same you know I, I, I've not always been nice to people but you know I, I, I've probably been audible to some people in the past but I try not to be anymore you know and a lot of that quotes are to try and instill a little bit of love into people you know that and when I when I was when I'm doing stuff for landscape of Britain I try not to be me you know I try to be a little bit more informative for the people that are looking at that feed so it's kind of it's, that's the hardest part for me is that is that writing or finding something to 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 put into the post that was going to stimulate people's brains yeah it's always good to live a kind life i know you've touched on that a few times but I, we could all do with more kindness in the world i would say yes well read read the egg and understand what he's saying it would probably blow your mind but so we, we've mentioned that obviously you're in royal Side, that you've done a lot of work in and around that part of Aberdeenshire. Is there any other area of the Northeast that you find particularly inspiring? I mean, I like, obviously, Finholm. That, that coast along Finholm is a, is a special place. I, I used to live in, in Kinloss, so I've got a lot of connection with that area, you know, and you go to Finholm, there's a special place, a special energy there. You know, we spent a lot of my youth going there on holidays and walking the beaches and stuff. So I quite like there. Inverness, I've been doing a lot of work at Inverness especially at uh, Fort Augustus in Invergarry, you know. So last week I was in Invergarry and we had to walk this uh, electricity pylon across the mountains for two and a half kilometres and then down the hill into Invergarry, you know, and it was just spectacular. So that kind of area I would like to explore a bit more, you know. The south side of Loch Ness is just stunning, you know. Walking in an area you've never walked in before is, you know, and you're not knowing what's around the corner or at the end of the forest or over the hill is... Is the I think it's quite a nice part about exploring. Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I'm an explorer. I like to go a strange country and just go walking somewhere, though. Just go visit somewhere, drive somewhere. If you know, it's that's the just to see what you'll see. That's the interesting part about being in a new environment for me is finding new things. Is there anything else that you would like to add to our podcast today? Anything that we haven't already covered in some of the questions? Uh, I can't really think of anything. I think, you know, for me, photography is just about making the effort, getting out there, you know. Sooner or later, you'll find your style and you'll find what's what's nice, you know, and it is. It's just keep on going with the photography, you know. Just digital camera, you can snap all day long, and if you don't like it, you can delete it and change it, you know. Change the settings in your camera, experiment, you know. Take notes if you need to. So, you know, it's a case of just keep on trying. Sooner or later, you'll... You know, if you keep practicing, you will be good. But, you know, like Ansel Adams says, you can take 10,000 photos and you're lucky if you get one good one. You know, that's, it's the same for every single photographer. They might post a stunning image, but they've got 700 that are just absolute crap, you know. Everybody is like that. Well, Martin, thanks very much for talking to us about everything photography. <laughs> it has been very informative and uh, certainly put all information that you mentioned in the blog post that goes alongside the podcast as well. My pleasure.